Hi there. We are here today with Kay Miller of West Central Missouri Community Action Agency. Hi, Kay. Hi there. And we are here with Trista Canaday today. Uh, she has uh, worked with Kay in the Family Self-Sufficiency Program, and we are going to learn their stories today. Trista, thank you so much for joining us. Can you tell us your story over the last five to seven years? Yes, so I started out in the housing program a few years back, about eight years ago. And I had a lot of dead-end jobs from the beginning. I ended up getting into the self-sufficient program. Once I did you know, have a little job that I had been there for a while, Kay was a big influence on me. You know, keep have some longevity at your job. You know, don't switch to another one. So she was kind of on me about that. So about four years ago, I found a job that I've been at for four years now. And she was. And you're big, working in a bank, is that correct? Yes, I'm working in a bank. She was a big influence on me there. She's like, you know, if you don't want it, I was doing a lot of CNA work previously. And she's like, if you don't want to do it anymore, you know, find something that you like. So I kind of wanted to not be on my feet all day. So I applied for a job at a bank. And. I got that job and I've been there for four years, great benefits, good pay, so it worked out well for me. I have three kids and so they kind of motivated me there as well. It helps me, I'm able to provide for them better than what I was before. So. You were in the housing program. Did Kay introduce you to the Family Self-Sufficiency Program? Yes. She what was, did you think of it when she first introduced you to it? At first, I was kind of, uh, not, not that I was against it, but I, I kind of didn't want to do the extra footwork sometimes. So when she told me, it's not that much, you know, you just get your goals, which my goals that I had at the time, I wanted to get job stability, I wanted to get my high school diploma, and I wanted to go back to get college credits. And I actually successfully finished all of those about two years ago, maybe three, I got my diploma. I went to school. I've been, I actually have about two semesters left to finish for my small business management, my associates. Congratulations. Yes. That is you. wonderful. And I've been on my job for four years, so I actually have successfully finished all of those. Krista, what was motivating you to, to strive for more during that time? What? Well, Kay was on my case. I was Kay. on her case. She was on my case. There were probably times she didn't like me very well. <laughs> but and probably times I didn't, but she's she really has influenced me a lot in my life. Last year, about July, I had some I came home from work to a hot house. And on top of a hot house, I had a kid handing me a, le a note saying some guy wanted me to call him that was looking at the house. And I really didn't understand why because, of course, I have a landlord, so it didn't make so much sense to me at the time. Now, just let me break in here just a minute. When we say hot house, she didn't have air conditioning anymore. It was gone. Someone had stolen her air conditioner. Oh, boy. So at the time, I was trying to contact my landlord. I'm calling him, he's not answering, I'm texting him. I finally text him and probably like later, that, a few hours later he texts me back and says he's out of town. I don't care, I don't have any air. And it's in the middle of summertime. And it's scalding hot outside, it's about 100 degrees in the house at this point. With children? With my three kids. So I wasn't okay with that. So I kind of stepped back from that situation for a minute because my daughter kept telling me to call this number, call this number. So I called the guy. And it was actually a guy that was looking at my house to purchase it. Apparently, from my understanding, the landlord hadn't paid the mortgage and the house was up for foreclosure. On top of me paying him my rent and Section 8 paying theirs as well. Completely unbeknownst to you and everybody else. Correct. He just wasn't paying it, apparently. And it was hard for me to believe at first when the guy told me, but he said, you know, hey, I, he gave me all the information. He gave me the website. I pulled everything up. The next morning, I was on it Cause, because he never called me back about the air. Of course, he never fixed it. How did that make you feel? It, it was very hurtful. I mean, I had rented from my, my landlord for seven years. So it, it was very hurtful to me that you know that I have these three kids 
And the way I saw it, I, with the house being up in foreclosure, I took it as if he took the air conditioner because I'm, this is the only house on the block with a lock on the air conditioner, and there's three vacant houses. Why would someone steal this one particular air conditioner? So I'm, I'm sure with that happening, you were in a panic. Exactly. I mean, it was, it was panic mode from then on out. I, the next morning, I went to work. I spoke with my manager, our OM. I told them, you know, what was going on. I, they let me leave. I, the first thing I did, as soon as Section 8 opened, I was in that office. I was letting them know what was going on. They're like, we have to talk to the landlord. I, he's not going to take your call. He won't even take mine. Because you've tried. I've tried this. I showed him all the messages, the text messages, the missing air conditioner. And then they were like, I told him about the whole foreclosure. And they're, at first they were kind of skeptical, like, well, we would know. And I'm like, no, apparently you don't. I didn't either, but it's going up for auction in two days. So I showed them all the information, and they actually reissued me a voucher immediately once they realized this was happening. So you and your kids would have a home again? Correct. So this all happened in like a brief moment because I actually, this happened on maybe, maybe two days, three days later, I was supposed to be taking my kids out of town, and I was supposed to be going out of town. Well, can't get my money back from anything, of course, because I didn't, you know, me not being the person, I probably should have gotten some kind of insurance, but I didn't. So I took my kids out of town, which was probably better anyways because we had no air. So they were going to be gone for two weeks to spend time with my family out of town. And I kind of started looking around for places to move, trying to find places. It made it a little bit hard because the landlord, he wouldn't even respond to anybody. And at that point, I kind of wanted to give up. I mean. Kay was there for me because I, I wanted to give up. What was she doing? She's like, you know, you can't give up. You know, you just got to keep looking. Someone will rent to you without, even without that history. Just don't worry about it. Find somewhere to go. Like, she was right there every step of the way. So and that motivated you to keep going? It motivated me to keep going. So I ended up, I put in my application for a, a townhouse. I went out of town because, like I said, I couldn't get the money back. Went out of town, came... While I was out of town, they contacted me back, let me know I would be able to get it. It just, it was another downward spiral there, though, because then they wanted me to pay some outrageous amount. I believe it was like $1,800 for a deposit because he hadn't contacted them back. To give a personal reference on her behalf. So it was as if I had no rental history. And I had great history. I just rented from one person for seven years, and I he just... Of course, he was upset. He let you down. Sure. He, he did. So I ended up actually sending him a message. You know, tell, I basically told him, you know, how could, how dare you do me this way? I've rented from you for so many years. You know, I have kids. Made your payments. I made my payments. I, I don't owe you anything. I actually paid him for July, and he, I wasn't there. You know, so it was just he actually ended up contacting me back. And he's like, oh, he tried to make it seem as if he didn't know anything, but I made it clear. You, you know. Well, it sounds like it was a blessing in disguise it, for you to move to another home. It was. And at that moment there, me and Kay had sat down, and she had talked to me over the phone, and she's like, you know, you pay almost all your rent. I've, I actually came out of the self-sufficient program about two years ago, and I basically pay all of my rent. So she's like, you know, you could be buying a house, and I never really... And why aren't you? <laughs> right. And I never really thought about buying a house. You didn't know it was an option for you. Not really. I mean, I just figure, you know, I pay my rent. I have somewhere to live. But she encouraged you to dream for more. She did. She was a big encouragement to do that. So... I been... Basically, you went through a homeless... Yeah, at, at that stage, at that stage when before I was actually moved into my house, I was actually living in a hotel for like two weeks because I had nowhere to go. You know, there were people who say, you know, you have thirty days even if they put foreclose and someone buys it. Yeah, if you have heat, I mean air. Yeah, there's no air. You know, I'm not going to make my kids suffer in a house that has no air. Mm -hmm. So I just ended up moving my stuff out, putting it in storage, and while I was while they were still in the process of inspections and things like that for the place, I stayed in the hotel for about two weeks, and that was terrible. I mean, it's 
my kids weren't with me, so it was kind of hard because I couldn't have all of them in this little hotel room. And I really didn't have somewhere where I could just stay with all my kids. So they kind of stayed with a family member, and I kind of just went on and stayed in a hotel, and I would just get them. That's hard on a mother. It, it was very hard. I would get them in the evenings, and we would do stuff together. Like the hotel, of course, would have pools, so they would get to go swimming. It was very, what made this the most difficult thing for me, I felt like I failed my family. And it, it was really hard because I have, my daughter turned four, 14 and, I'm sorry, <laughs> my daughter turned 14 and I, she, I wasn't there, you know, I'm in a hotel, she's with family and I felt like I was the worst parent in the world because I felt like I failed my kids. And you know, I have Kay telling me, you know, you can't feel that way. It's not your fault, you did everything wrong at that moment there and then with her telling me the whole home ownership, I should really think about it, it really made me say, I have to, this is what I want to do. So if I'm going to be put out of a home, it's going to be because I didn't do something right. I didn't pay my mortgage, not because someone else did. So at that moment, I decided I wanted to buy a home. So for the last year I've been in my place, I, once my lease is up in the end of, at the end of this in July this year, I'm actually looking, the, I'm in the process of trying to buy a home. So I've been doing credit repair. Next month I'll be getting, they're going to be doing my pre-approval for me to buy my house. And by the, I'm going to say by the end of August for sure, I will be in my home. You will be this a homeowner. This is a new homeowner down the road. Yes, it soon. is. Yes, and it I is. Can, I really do thank Kay for all of that because I never would have thought about it if she would have never put it in my head. Trista, tell me some of the for instances, specifics. What are, what are some of the for instances? I, I've heard some uh, amazing stories about some of the things that Kay has done with different people. What are some of the things that she did with you that encouraged you, motivated you, inspired you, maybe even brought you back to reality with a... Can I share one? <laughs> I know there was, there was a time one day I get a call... And she's like, I'm quitting my job. I'm just going to quit my job. And I'm like, Trista, you can't quit your job. You've got an excellent job. You are excelling. You are doing so well. But I'm so mad. I'm like, breathe. You can't quit your job. Yes. And she, she really did talk me through that one because that was a very rough day for me. I mean, I do, my job is a very good job, but it can be very stressful. And so she brought me back to reality, like, you got to keep that job. And if you would have quit, that would have created an ineligibility status for you within the program, and you wouldn't have been able to graduate. Mm -hmm. Tell us about maybe another time. Kay may not have even known you were watching, but something she did that you thought, you just kind of filed it in the back of your head and thought, yep, that's something I need to do. That's something, I mean... Tell me about those moments, maybe indirectly, that Kate, maybe just you watching or observing her talk to others or, you know, anything like that. So, there have been many instances that Kay has influenced me in any, many ways. And I honestly, the job thing has been a lot. She, I've probably called her a thousand times on that job. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, and she's always been there to say, you know, she's my motivation. I honestly, even once I leave the program, once I'm done with Section 8, at this, I'm still probably going to contact Kay we, when I have those conversations. Please. I'm in her phone. She's <laughs> I'm probably going to still be contacting her, you know, letting, you know, hey, you know, seeing how she is, you know, saying, you know, if, even if I'm having a bad day, hey, this job, I'm going to quit today. I'm, she's going to be the first one to say, no, you're not. So <laughs> no, you're not. That's how she always does. Me, no, you're not. She says, you have those kids to think about. And she's just, she's been very, a big impact on my life. I think without her, I probably, I'm not sure if I would have been in the program still. I honestly, I think that she's been We've a worked through some hurdles. A lot. Kay, what are some things that you remember during the time that Trista was, that you were working with Trista and she was working with you in, the, in this program? What are some things that stick out in your mind? Mostly, I would say I, I totally believed in her. I saw such fantastic abilities and 
potential. Uh, there were times maybe her attitude got in the way, and I'd have to say, now, back off, Trista. <laughs> Come on, let's, let's rethink this. So you were bluntly honest. Yes, but I like that in her. I do. A lot of people, too. And, um, but just seeing, just seeing who Trista is today is just so awesome. I mean, I just see, I see someone who has bloomed, and she is, has come so far. And she, oh, we haven't seen anything yet. She's no, going onward. Absolutely. Oh, yeah. Trista, what would your be life, what would your life be like had you not gone through this program and met Miss Kay? I think I would have, it would have been a vicious cycle of dead-end jobs and not making very much money, living paycheck to paycheck. I, I just don't, I don't think I would have made it this far. I don't think I would have went back and gotten my diploma. I don't think that I would have taken any college courses. I, I don't think I would have done any of that. I think I would have just continued the vicious cycle that I was doing. Have you broken that cycle? Oh, yeah. I, I won't go back. And your children are watching everything that you do. Yes. And like Miss Kay said a while ago, uh, you are the best role model for your children. And we are so proud of you, yes, Trista. Yes, we are, Trista. So proud of you. Miss Kay, can you tell us a little bit about your story? What has motivated you to work with Trista and so many others, pulling the best out of them and, and keeping them going? What what within you drives you? What's your story? Mostly, I would say because I've been there too on a different level, but uh, there have been many times in my life that I might have thought I couldn't do something. But as I tell many people, how do you eat an elephant one bite at a time? And to be an overcomer that I feel like I am, I want to share that with people. I want them to see the real me, that I also have faced obstacles. I also have faced barriers. Um, you have to keep on keeping on when you feel like you can't. That you just, there's, there's just not a place to say I can't. You have to keep on. And I just want to inspire people. I want to see the best in people. And I want to change their lives. I want things to be, I want their life to be better because I've been in it at some point with them. Kay, the, the very first person that you worked with to help lead to self-sufficiency was your own child. Yes. And yes. can you tell us briefly what your child went through? As, um, as a 20-year-old um, who was an Eagle Scout, going to college, working at a grocery store, he was a great kid. But making a wrong choice one night, uh, going to a party, he wasn't the partying kind of kid. But then leaving the party under the influence of alcohol, not drunk, but under the influence. Uh, there was black ice on the roadways. Uh, he didn't negotiate a curve and rolled his vehicle. He was ejected, paralyzed from the waist down for the rest of his life. He wanted to die. He didn't, he didn't want to live like that, and he was very honest about that. I really was afraid he might commit suicide at some point because he did not want to live like that. And it was like, um, as a parent, I wanted to just unparalyze him. I wanted to not let him go through all that hardship. I didn't want to have to see him face what was ahead. but. Insta instead, it was just inspiring him to go back to school, to finish. He was almost there to go back to school, linking him up with a voc rehab who handicapped his truck. He was able to drive with hand controls now. He's paralyzed, uh, isn't he? He is, still to this day, but he has overcome so much. Paralyzed from? His waist down. From the waist down. Um, he went on back to school, obtained his associate's degree in drafting, and that was the direction he was headed prior to the accident. Um, when he finished his associate's, he, was, he said, I'm done. And I'm like, oh, no, you're not. And he <laughs> went on to get his bachelor's degree 
and within 30 days had a fantastic job with Black & Veatch Engineering as a draftsman. Uh, worked there 10 years and now has gone on to a, a bigger company and even better opportunities and he's doing fantastic. So it's like breathing inspiration into people, encouragement into people. At least you can get up and run. At least you have legs that work. Uh, don't let anything stop you. Uh, we all have barriers that we face, but think of a, a, a way around it, a road around it, over it, under it, some way. Uh, I always told my kids, and I try to tell uh, people that I'm working with, my customers, if plan A doesn't work, let's go to plan B. If plan B doesn't work, let's go to plan C. But do not quit whatever you do. Do not quit. So uh, that's always been in my life that I had to keep on keeping on, and that's what I try to tell them as well. Keep on keeping on. So I, there's one thing that I did want to say. Even with the whole thing back in July when I had to move, what makes what really draws me to Kay is she's so concerned about me and how I'm doing and if I'm okay and if I have somewhere to go and where I'm going to go. And this poor woman is about to have surgery and she's calling me to make sure I'm okay. I'm like, I should be calling you to make sure that you're going to be okay. And she's calling me. And I just, I love that about her because she's always, she's always concerned about someone else. She's, she's so, it's like she's selfless, like no she, it, it, it's just something about her, and that's why I, 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 it draws me to Kay so much. She's probably one of the people that I speak to the most at West Central because she's she's always she's always going to give me that push or tell me to sit down. <laughs> that's right. And Trista, you brought up something uh, very important that we we haven't talked about yet um, during your time in the program. Kay was going through some health issues. Kay, can you tell us a little bit about that? Well, I was diagnosed with breast cancer in uh, 2016, two years ago. I was always a, an advocate for myself. I always had my proper tests done each year, blood work, everything. I wanted to be on top of things. Uh, so it came as quite a surprise because I thought I was doing everything I was supposed to do to not get breast cancer. However, uh, that proceeded with uh, bilateral mastectomy. Uh, then it was about five to six months heavy chemo. Uh, during the time of chemo, I developed, I had to take a shot to be able to withstand the heavy chemo. And that particular new last shot uh, possibly caused me to have pulmonary embolisms and, uh, uh, what am I trying to say here? You had a lot of physical I had, complications. Uh, pneumonia in both lungs. So I was very, very ill. I almost died. Uh, in fact, I realized I was really in bad shape when I was in the hospital, and I asked the doctor, Am I going to make it? And he paused, and he said, You have a life threatening situation. Uh, we'll do all we can. At that point, I knew I was in bad shape. Um, I prayed a lot, and I, as I had all along. But um, I do feel like God gave me a second chance, and I was healed. I went home on oxygen, but I was healed. <laughs> and it's been a long process to get to where we are today. Not in just Trista's life, but in my life as well. Um, after this last year, uh, we proceeded with... Well, actually, I had radiation as well after that, so there were uh, like 30 weeks of radiation. Uh, I came away with, you know, some scarring, and, and it, was, it was pretty difficult, but you know what? God prevails. He brought me through, and I'm very thankful to be alive today. That I can make an impact in, in lives that matter, and I really care about each person that I work with. Uh, and I just might add, during the time that you were doing chemo and radiation, you didn't miss work. You didn't call in. You didn't stop. Be you were showing the example to every other person, just as you try to motivate Trista, just as you try to motivate other people, 
you were being that? As a person who lives in rural America, I was going to doctors in Kansas City, Kansas, so at KU, and so that was like a, a 70, 75 mile trek for me, and I requested if I could work in the Cass County office every day, I could at least go over to my, my radiation and then come back and work, and that's just what I did. So they were very accommodating to let me do that, and I was so appreciative of that. So. And Trista, were you aware when she was going through this trying time? Yes, we had conversations, probably not at the very beginning, but after she was gone for a minute, I had to get on her case, of course. Where have you been? You weren't here. Hey, I don't like you when you're not at work. And so, of course, that time, you know, she let me know. And I'm like, oh, you know, I'm, I'm really sorry to hear that. And from then, that point on, I will be the one to call and say, hey, how are you doing? Just to she check was on it. She was on it. Did you have any clue that there was anything going no. on? I mean, but like she said, you said, you never know and, until it happened. So I had no clue until she actually told me. I mean, she... When I saw her, she looked fine, so I didn't know. Kay, I'm, I'm honored to know you. Uh, thank you so much for sharing your story today with us and the work that you do at West Central Missouri Community Action Agency. Trista, thank you also for your determination and your spunk for not giving up. Tell, I wouldn't let her quit. No. <laughs> Trista, tell us what the changes in your life are going to mean for your children and your grandchildren. What are those changes going to mean for them? I feel like the changes that I've made, my kids see that. And they're going to want to live their lives the way that my life is going. and they're gonna, Or even better. I mean, that's kind of where I went with what I was doing. I wanted to... I wanted my life to be better than what it was when I was a kid. So I wanted my kids' lives to be better than what my life was when I was little. So I took that and I run with it and I want them to have the best life that they can have. So I want them to understand that there's a process and the way you do everything and don't ever give up. Absolutely. Absolutely, ladies. Yes, sister, that's what we want to hear. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you, Kay. Well, I love you, Trista. I love you, too.